everyone. Uh, so this is the uh, third major episode, uh, I believe, of my history series. And in this episode, uh, I'd like to discuss uh, the rise of the Persians and the establishment uh, of the uh, Achaemenid Persian Empire, which replaced uh, the Median Empire, the Babylonian uh, Kingdom or Empire, as well as uh, the... Uh, empire or kingdom of the Lydians and you know prior to the rise of uh, the Persians uh, the Near East was uh, dominated uh, by uh, the Assyrians now as you know in my first episode I discussed how the Assyrians were defeated uh, and uh, they were replaced by the Babylonians and you know again this Assyrian Empire and this Babylonian Empire they're just another version of the original Assyrian Empire and the original Babylonian Empire but nonetheless you know uh, when these two empires were established uh, and uh, you know when the Babylonians replaced the uh, Assyrians it allowed uh, there to be somewhat of a power vacuum in the region which was uh, partially filled by the incoming Iranic tribes who had migrated to Iran from Central Asia and uh, you know obviously one of these uh, tribes were uh, the Medians uh, who helped uh, the Babylonian sack Nineveh, but the other were the Persians, and that's what we are going to discuss today. The Persians uh, first established themselves in southwestern Iran, and you know these Persian tribes uh, migrated from the environs of the Yaz horizon and then settled in southwestern Iran. And uh, essentially, what happened from this point onward was that. Uh, no, they were well established. They weren't dominant, you know. They were under, uh, they came under the uh, rulership of the Medians, but nonetheless, they were pretty prominent in the region, you know. And uh, this, their main uh, dynasty was uh, descended from Achaemenes, who was the eponymous uh, founder of uh, the Achaemenid dynasty. And uh, essentially, all of the Achaemenid uh, kings descended from Achaemenes. Persia was essentially held by the Achaemenid dynasty. You know, another name for the Achaemenids is uh, the Tispids, uh, which uh, is just uh, Tispis was uh, a son of uh, Achaemenes. So that's another uh, name for the dynasties. But the prim primary name is the Achaemenids. And uh, essentially what you had here was a dynasty which... Uh, arose in southern Iran, you know, it probably had its roots in uh, the environs of the Yaz horizon, but nonetheless, the Achaemenids rose, and it was not until the reign of uh, Cambyses I that they gained any prominence, you know, he married the daughter of uh, the Median king Astyages, and it was their son, Cyrus II, also known as Cyrus the Great, who would truly rise to the occasion and establish uh, the Persian Empire, overthrow uh, his uh, grandfather and uh, create uh, the Achaemenid state. So essentially uh, the first uh, deed of Cyrus was uh, to revolt against his uh, father who was uh, the uh, you know a revolt rather against his grandfather who was the Median king and Cyrus overthrew him. He then uh, proceeded to uh, become the king of Media. It was the first major title he uh, established. After this, uh, he moved against another powerful kingdom, and that was the kingdom of Lydia. Now, Lydia, the Lydian kingdom, uh, was a major uh, kingdom in Anatolia. You know, they spoke uh, the Anatolian languages, which are now extinct. Uh, they were a branch of the Indo-European uh, languages, but nonetheless... The uh, Anatolian uh, kingdoms, uh, specifically Lydia, was uh, defeated, and uh, the first uh, their, their first major encounter came at uh, the battle. There was this major battle in Anatolia, and uh, it ultimately led to the fall of uh, the uh, Lydian capital, which was uh, Sardis. Now, it was not uh, Cyrus who had uh, moved against uh, the Lydian kingdom. No. Essentially, what it was, uh, it was not uh, Cyrus, you know. The, what, what, what happened here was uh, the uh, Lydians uh, first attacked uh, the Persians and defeated, uh, you know, uh, it, it was not even uh, a major battle. It was just a secret uh, assault and uh, they won but with heavy, heavy uh, casualties and, uh, you know, they managed to uh, loot and uh, kill much of the people. This was the Battle of uh, Teria and uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, this initially, it was, overall it was a tactical stalemate, but uh, the 
Lydians attacked Tyria first, they conquered the city and enslaved uh, much of its inhabitants, and then uh, the, uh, per the Persians uh, moved against them and recaptured uh, the city, and uh, ultimately uh, this, allowed, uh, with, uh, this allowed the Persians to reestablish their control over the city. Unfortunately, it was sacked before that, and many of its uh, inhabitants were enslaved. However, this specific battle led to Cyrus uh, moving his forces against the Lydians and defeating them at the Battle of Timbra, which was a decisive uh, Persian victory. And this battle ultimately led to the fall of Sardis, which was the Persian, uh, rather, the Lydian capital. So this was the first major uh, conquest of uh, Cyrus the Great after his rebellion against Media. Following uh, this major uh, victory, there was another uh, major uh, b battle. And, you know, after this, Cyrus uh, decided to... Uh, expand against uh, the Babylonians and what you have to remember here is that it was actually the uh, Medians themselves who had uh, helped uh, the uh, Babylonians uh, come to power and uh, it's really interesting because uh, you know the Babylonians were put into power by uh, one Iranic tribe and uh, they were uh, brought down by another Iranic tribe which is very very interesting but nonetheless, uh, you know, the this uh, Neo-Babylonian uh, period is uh, most notable for the reign of one emperor, and that was uh, Nebuchadnezzar II, uh, who, as you know, besieged, Jer Jer besieged Jerusalem and uh, took over the city, enslaved many of its kings, and also enslaved its people, transported them to, uh, back to, uh, you know, back to the... Uh, heartland of the Babylonian kingdom and he's the most notable uh, Babylonian leader but nonetheless nonetheless uh, the last uh, Babylonian leader was Nabonidus by this time the Babylonian state was completely uh, you know disorientated Nabonidus was not even in the city he just arrived you know it's not clear but he arrived either just before the city fell or just after the city fell he was spending most of his time in the desert believe it or not in a temple and uh, it's it's really interesting but anyways i won't get into that one cyrus moved against him he defeated him decisively he conquered the city uh, of babylon and uh, you know this is actually recorded in the cyrus cylinder and uh, this was the first major uh, major uh, uh, victory against a major empire you know you can say the medians were an empire or the uh, Lydians were, but nonetheless, you know, those were more of tribal confederacy, and the Lydians were just a small kingdom, but the Babylonians were a major kingdom, and Cyrus's victory against the Babylonians allowed him to ultimately put an end to the uh, Neo-Babylonian Empire, and this was essentially it. Uh, Cyrus conquered the city, he spared the people, uh, and uh, this, this pretty much uh, marked the end of the Neo-Babylonian phase, and uh, from this point onwards, the Near East would be dominated either by two major powers, one the Persians and the other the uh, Hellenic uh, people, then later the Romans. So that's essentially it. This fall uh, essentially marked the end of uh, native uh, Semitic presence uh, in uh, the Near East for a very long time until the rise of Islam. Cyrus also freed the Jews. He also freed uh, you know, many of the captives and he allowed for uh, Babylon to, uh, you know, the city prospered under the, his rule, but essentially, this was uh, one of his last major conquests. You know, the city fell, and uh, ultimately, you know, this uh, was a major victory for Cyrus. You know, he had now single-handedly taken down three major empires, and he did not stop here. You know, he was preparing an invasion of Egypt, but he was killed before that uh, could uh, be undertaken. But nonetheless, his son, Cambyses, conquered Egypt. He actually died uh, fighting against the Median tribes uh, in uh, Central Asia, rather not the Median tribes, but the uh, Scythian tribes, uh, specifically the forces of uh, Tomiris, who was a uh, leader of the Masagatai. There are actually other stories of uh, Cyrus's death, but I won't get into them now. This is the most uh, notable one, that he died fighting against uh, the Scythians, and uh, he was killed uh, by uh, the forces of Tomiris. But nonetheless, you know, ultimately Cyrus the Great laid the foundation of the first Persian Empire, the first great uh, empire in the world even, and he was one of the world's greatest conquerors. And uh, his establishments uh, allowed for the Persians to come to dominate uh, much of the Near East, and uh, even parts of, uh, you know, North Africa and uh, Southern Europe. So 
that's essentially it. Uh, you know, he was uh, succeeded by Cambyses, and I'll, uh, my next uh, episode will actually talk about that. And then after that, uh, I'll also discuss uh, the rise of uh, Darius and uh, his uh, contributions to the rise of uh, the Persian Empire. And he was the last major conqueror of the Persian Empire. His son uh, Xerxes uh, attempted to build upon his uh, invasion of uh, the Greek mainland. Unfortunately, uh, that failed, and I will discuss that as well. So, you know, I'm just going to go chronologically, but yeah, I hope uh, you enjoyed this episode. If you think it's uh, a bit too less in information, I'm sorry about that. Uh, the uh, main objective of this series is not to provide a comprehensive history, but just a shortened version of history, a short uh, retelling of uh, historical accounts. And that's essentially it. Uh, thanks for listening and take care.